you can lose the weight and still be silently getting sicker. Visceral fat wraps around your organs, fuels inflammation, and raises your risk of heart disease, diabetes, stroke, and even dementia. I'm Dr. John Go. I'm a surgeon, I lost 75 pounds myself, and now I help others do the same. In this video, I'll give you eight science-backed habits to reduce visceral fat from the inside out. They're simple, evidence-based, and built to fit your life. This isn't about looking shredded, it's about staying alive and feeling alive. These habits are rooted in real data and refined through real results. But real quick, this is for education only, not medical advice. Always talk to your own doctor before making any changes. Now, let's fix what matters. Number one, eat polyphenol rich foods. Polyphenols are plant compounds in fruits and veggies. They influence your gut liver axis and increase molecules like urolithin A, which supports mitochondrial function and metabolic health. In the direct plus trial, a high polyphenol Mediterranean diet reduced visceral fat more than a standard healthy diet, even after accounting for weight loss. Foods rich in polyphenols include blueberries, pomegranates, green tea, leafy greens, and extra virgin olive oil. These foods don't just improve health, they help your body target the fat that matters most. Now, let's go upstream to the recovery systems that regulate your hormones and hunger. Number two, fix your sleep and also stress and hydration. Sleep affects key hormones tied to fat storage, appetite, and recovery. There are two main parts to consider here, falling asleep and staying asleep. You also want high quality sleep, that is more deep and REM sleep, which are the restorative phases of sleep. So how do we do all this? Well, number one is keep a fixed sleep schedule. Go to bed at the same time, wake up at the same time. This helps normalize your circadian rhythm. A trip that I use daily is a hot shower close to bedtime. This helps drop core body temperature because your surface blood vessels dilate with the heat. And lower core body temperature helps with sleep onset or getting to bed. When you wake up, get daylight exposure early in the morning to anchor your body's clock. Of course, stay hydrated during the day, but limit the amount of fluids at night. I personally don't drink fluids within three hours before bedtime. Avoid caffeine eight hours before bed, eat lighter and earlier dinners, and keep your room cool, dark, and quiet. Personally, my thermostat's set between 68 and 71. Also, you need to address chronic stress because chronic stress leads to higher cortisol, which promotes visceral fat storage. So for me, that means working out regularly, journaling, meditation, hanging out with my cats. Once your sleep and stress are under control, the next step is to repair your gut, where your body decides how to absorb and how to store fat. Number three, repair your gut. Your gut microbiome affects insulin, inflammation, and how you store fat. Some studies show specific probiotics like Lactobacillus gesseri can reduce visceral fat in about 12 weeks, but of course results can vary. Good sources include kimchi, yogurt, and kefir. You can also add prebiotic fiber from chia, flax, or psyllium, and that helps to feed the healthy bacteria. But none of this works without the nutrient that protects your metabolism, protein. Number four, hit your protein target. Protein protects muscle. Muscle drives metabolism. Some studies show higher protein diets preserve lean mass and reduce visceral fat more than lower protein diets with the same calories. So aim for 0.7 to one gram of protein per pound of target body weight. Build your meals around lean meats like chicken and fish and replace mindless snacking with Greek yogurt, cottage cheese, eggs, and other healthy snacks. But protein alone isn't enough. Your muscles need stimulus. That brings us to training. Number five, resistance training. Lifting weights does more than just build muscle. It helps reduce visceral fat and improves insulin sensitivity. Train at least two to three times per week. Prioritize compound lifts like squat, bench, deadlift, row, presses. Stick with the rep range between six and 12 reps, aiming for three sets per major muscle group and one to two reps in reserve. You don't need long sessions. You just need consistent stimulus. And if you don't know what reps in reserve are, or you don't know where to begin with lifting, check out my A to Z guide on weightlifting here, made for beginners. Now, let's zoom out from what you eat to when you eat. Number six, fix your meal timing. Your metabolism runs on a clock. Eating late at night reduces fat burning and lessens your blood glucose control. Early time-restricted eating like 12 to 14 hours overnight can reduce visceral fat and improve insulin sensitivity even when calories are kept the same. Eat your first meal within one to two hours after waking and finish eating three to five hours before bed. This creates a more natural time-restricted eating window. 
Now, let's increase fat burning during the day without living in the gym. Number seven, walk smarter. We've all heard of the 10,000 step rule, and that's fine, but let's make walking more efficient. The Japanese interval walking training method alternates three minutes of fast walking and three minutes of slow walking, and this can raise cardiovascular fitness and fat burning more than just steady walking alone. Do five rounds for 30 minutes total, three days per week, or whenever you go on a walk. In Japanese trials, this improved VO2 max by about 10 to 15 percent, it increased leg strength, and lowered blood pressure more than just steady walking alone. It also raised fat burning in middle-aged and older adults. Now, let's multiply these benefits with a deeper endurance base. Number 8. Train in Zone 2 Zone 2 is your main fat burning zone. This is similar to what some coaches call Maffetone style training. Train at 60 to 70% of your estimated maximum heart rate, which is about 220 minus your age. If you want accuracy, use a chest heart rate monitor. I use the Garmin one linked below. If not, the test talk works great. You should walk or jog at a pace where you can speak in full sentences. Start with 30 to 45 minutes, two to three times per week. And over time, you'll go further and faster while staying in the same heart range. And if jogging is too much, start with incline walking or speed walking. Zone 2 improves how your body uses fat for fuel, and over time you should be able to run more in the same amount of time. That's how you know you're making cardiovascular progress. If you really want to use this to improve your cardiovascular base to do things like marathons or other endurance things, then you should shoot for increasing the amount of time within your heart rate zone week after week or month after month. Combine Zone 2 with all of the earlier habits and you now have a full system. These eight habits target visceral fat from multiple angles, from your cells to your sleep. Try this out for 90 days. Track your waist, track your energy, track your results. Use a DEXA scan to help objectively quantify your visceral fat before and after. And if you're ready to go deeper, check out this video here. I'll show you the exact system I use with my clients to incinerate fat and build muscle. Stay consistent, stay focused. You're not just losing fat, you're reclaiming your health. Peace.